I'm a professional trail guide living and working in Japan. I moved out here from my native Australia several years ago for work. My job is pretty cool but can be a tad creepy from time to time. One forest I work in is a hot spot for suicides. Sometimes the Japanese authorities hire me to help them find bodies of people that have wandered too far from the path. Generally, these people never wanted to be found if they ventured too far. Because of this, the locals say demons lurk within the massive sea of trees. Lost souls who have been tricked and are now unable to escape the endless maze. I believe none of the tales that locals make up about it until yesterday, when I found a strange tiny diary in a plastic bag washed up along a stream. The contents are extremely disturbing and are making me question my ongoing employment. I need to share this in order to preserve my own sanity. The entry reads as follows. Okigahara, or the Sea of Trees, is a forest in Japan that rests at the base of Mount Fuji. It is a Japanese national park that brings in thousands of tourists every year. It's also known as the Suicide Forest because people have been ending their lives there for hundreds of years. Not everyone who comes here is a tourist though. Many of those who come to this place seek a permanent solution to their temporary problems, including myself. It's a cursed place that serves to draw in the miserable and the damned in droves. The local Japanese say that ghosts or yuri prowl the forest, hoping to lead those who go there off the path and to their demise. My life has just been too overwhelming. To cope with the death of my parents, I was working 80 hour weeks. This was partially to avoid the fact that my wife was sleeping with another guy in our own bed. The long hours served as the only way to remedy the crushing debt that buried me and prevented me from escaping my desperate home life. There really was no way out for me. I had no friends, nowhere to go. I could either be at home listening to my wife or I could deal with the load of paperwork at my job. Unfortunately, it was a simple choice. One morning I woke up after a night of sleeping in my cold garage and decided that I had had enough. I was going to do a world a favor and off myself. However, I was afraid. I've always been a coward. After extensive research of the easiest way to die was inconclusive, I decided that the only thing I can control was the venue in which I died. I had always wanted to visit Japan and deep down inside I hoped that the long journey would give me time to change my mind. Unfortunately. My mind remained unchanged and within the week I found myself on a jet heading to Tokyo. My mind raced at this point, I still didn't know how I would do it. Not having the means to get sleeping pills, knowing that guns are unheard of in Japan and being too much of a coward to use a knife, I decided on hanging. I figured it would be the most economical way to die, maybe not the most pleasant, but who cares? Someone as pathetic as I didn't deserve a good death. Once I arrived in the country, the first order of business was to buy a sturdy bit of rope whilst I was still in the city. Now all I had to do was to locate a solid tree. This wouldn't be hard considering the venue I had chosen for my demise. Next, I had to find transportation to the forest. This was by far the hardest part considering that I know no Japanese whatsoever and many of the locals who spoke a silver of English refused to take me once they realized that I had no camping gear. Unable to find direct transportation, I had to alter my plan. After nearly an entire day of searching, I secured transportation on a rickety old bus to Kagawuchiko Hotel, which is located right off the trailhead that leads into Okigahara. I spent the bus ride planning exactly how I would spend the last few hours of life that I still had, and ultimately I decided that I would make it fast. I would follow the trail for approximately a mile and then leave the trail for another mile. This left me little time to change my mind and meant that they would most likely never find my corpse. After being dropped off, I saw how vast the forest truly was. It was around noon local time, but the shadow cast by the forest seemed to block out all the light from around it. There was also an engulfing feeling of emptiness creeping from the depth of the woods. But as I made my way into the forest, I saw a dozen of signs that all had variation of the same message. Think about your family. Or get help. Death isn't the answer. I got chills shortly after walking in. It says if the temperature drops by 20 degrees when you enter the forest. Some say this is because of the trapped spirits who left the path and can't find their way out, but I attribute it to the thick canopy over the trees. More of the signs I mentioned earlier lined the trail. They bore messages that said never to leave the trail. Locals here know that the only people who leave the trail are those who wish to die. As a result, tourists stick to the well mapped paths. I continued to follow the trail. As I pressed on deeper into the wood, 
sadness overwhelmed me. It was as if I was standing in a black hole where no light could reach me. I knew that it was time to leave the trail. To my surprise, immediately upon leaving the trail, I heard soft whispers. I turned back and took one last look at the trail for just a moment before pressing on, the soothing voices backing me deeper into the forest. Continuing through the sea of trees, the feeling of sadness and emptiness dissipated. I was no longer chilly. Instead, the cool breeze felt great. The leaves crunched under my boots. I could hear the sound of water flowing in a small creek, and the sweet whispers continued to draw me in. I found the forest to be peaceful, forgetting about all the problems at home. I knew that I wanted to stay here for eternity, shrouded and protected by the forest. After what felt like an hour of wandering and taking in the breathtaking sights, I found a tall tree in a small clearing. It was dusk by this point, and I knew that this meant that the sun had set on me. It was time. I took a seat at the base of the tree and began tying the rope that I had brought in Tokyo into a tight noose. Next, I found a large rock that I could roll over to the tree. After doing this, I threw my noose over a low branch near the rock and secured it. Stepping up into the rock and placing my head through the noose like a necklace was the surest thing I had ever done. It erased all of my doubts and every mortal fear of death that I had. I knew that I was safe here. Finally, I stepped down. There was no peaceful ending like I had anticipated. Instead, the world went dark and the forest turned cold once again. Hundreds of one sweet voices began screaming. At the same time, waiting in despair, they told me I was a failure, that I deserved my fate, and how I would never find my way out of this place. They tricked me. I fought with all of my strength against the rope tied around my neck. As I thrashed and twisted violently, I saw pale, thin women with a black hair in a white kimono sauntering towards me. My vision faded in and out and I knew that I was dying. Each time this happened, she got closer until finally, she placed her icy hands around my neck as she let out a haunting wail. I pulled at the noose and desperately tried to alleviate pressure on my neck, but it was of no use. The ghostly woman grabbed me and was pulling me down, creating even more force on my throat. Everything went dark until suddenly I found myself in so much pain on the cold forest floor. I looked up and saw that the rope had snapped. The woman in white was no longer there, but I was alone in the forest. It was frigid and dark as I made my way to my feet and scrambled to find the trail. I searched and searched for hours to no avail, afraid and alone in the forest. I gave up hope yet again. At one point, I saw one of the telltale yellow signs and sprinted towards it only to run full force into a hanged man as he dangled limply from the tree. The force of the impact caused the corpse to plummet from the tree and crash into the ground. As this happened, I made my way to my feet to run in the opposite direction, but found myself pulled to the ground by a cold, dead hand. Mouth agape, the decaying man clawed my legs and tried to climb up my body in response to this. I delivered a swift, forceful kick to his face that allowed me to climb to my feet and begin running. I kept running for hours. The entire time I heard him screaming and running right behind me. I came to Okigahara to die, but now I wasn't going to allow that to happen. I knew that I would make it away from that horrific place. Finally, after hours of running, the footsteps behind me died out and I saw a light. There appeared to be a woman holding a candle walking through the forest. I desperately wanted to run to her, but I knew that she had been one of the ghosts I had encountered earlier. Instead, I made my way towards the only thing I could still see from where I was, the mountain. I continued to move through the forest at breakneck speed, hoping that I could just make it to the mountain and work my way around its edge until I found civilization, but that never happened. Currently, I'm somewhere in a system of caves. My legs are badly broken after a fall, and I fear that I will not be able to crawl to safety because I'm so depleted. I've been in this forest for what feels like days. I'm not even sure if I'm alive anymore. What if I'm one of them? They are here. I can hear hundreds of whispering voices. They are in here with me. I keep drifting in and out of consciousness, and each time I fall asleep, I feel like the Yuri's pale, icy hands pulling me into Damchen. 
I'm throwing this diary into a small stream that is running next to me in hopes that someone finds it. If someone finds this diary, please recover my body. I don't want to be like them, doomed to wander this forsaken place forever. <laughs>